Welcome back to Seekers. This is Athanasius for the Athanasius Reports. And this special edition is not on its usual time because of the debates last night. I did not want to do a report the night before such a big event and then have to wait another week to talk about such event. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to push it back, wait for this thing to occur, and then I'm going to talk about it for the majority of this report tonight. And I have a special guest with us tonight, my lovely wife. Hello there, love. How are you doing? I'm doing well now that I have alcohol. Thank you. Yes, that was a uh, prerequisite for last night when watching this. It was probably the only way I could get through without breaking the TV. Much like probably the only way we're going to get through this is through alcohol yet again. Yeah, I'm drinking a nice <laughs> Tolomar do. What was that, a Ciroc Amaretto you have over I there? I am drinking Ciroc, yes. Yeah. That is my choice tonight. I know we have not been paid by any of these companies to advertise for them. Although, if they would love to you know, give us a call here, and uh, we will take the money. We're, we're always uh, looking for you know a couple extra bucks to help us with home repairs here. Well, but, and we're big fans. Yeah, we are. We are. But let's get back to the topic at hand here and that is the first presidential debate Trump versus Hillary now anyone that was paying attention to my Twitter feed last night I made three predictions first being that Lester Holt the moderator was going to go candy crawly against Trump second being that despite the performances the media was was always going to call this debate for Hillary and the third being that Despite what the media says, the people going to these online polls and message boards were overwhelmingly going to say that Trump won the debate. How did I come out with here? Or, or, let's try again. How did I come out with my predictions? Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about this here, hon. So give me uh, before I jump into this because I'm the political junkie here and you're not. Coming at this from a just regular, ordinary American viewpoint, how did you view this debate last night? Honestly, bullshit. Um, just like how we've been uh, seeing, you know, all all the other ones. Um, I didn't expect anything different, um, and we didn't get anything different. Now, when you call BS, BS in what way? That they weren't uh, biased, Lester. Okay, one one of your fans uh, started the the hashtag biased Lester. I really like that, so I'm gonna I'm gonna promote that hashtag biased Lester. Um, he did not bring up any questions regarding any of the actual issues, or nor nor anything really any nor anything important on any, on any level. And he was constantly um, getting at Trump. So from a ordinary American viewpoint here, you immediately saw that the moderator was intentionally biased in favor of Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And th th that's... I don't want to I don't want to gloat and say, yep, my first prediction was true because a blind squirrel could have told you that. To, from the beginning, a blind squirrel could have told you that Lester Holt was going to be very biased. I mean, you, you look at the lead up to this debate and you listen to what Hillary's campaign was saying, what the media was saying. You look at what they did to Matt Lauer at the just the, the town hall presentation and how they skewered him because he he didn't even go after Hillary Clinton. He just asked some mildly softball questions. Yes, I do consider his the way that he treated the emails and the other questions he asked her because he never followed up on them. He never really pressured her. He just kind of tossed them out there and let and let Hillary hit it. But you saw the treatment he got, and then you saw the treatment that Jimmy Fallon got, who's not even a political commentator. He's he's a comedian. He's a late night talk show host. And then when he did the little thing where you know, he run his hand through Trump's hair and he's like, "Oh, it's real," whatever. Everybody got on him for doing that so the pressure was on for lester to uh, yeah turn the turn the tables on trump and to have this debate go towards hillary would you agree with that statement there hon i would and 
I don't know very much about the guy. I kind of wonder if if he wasn't pressured by hello we all know he was pressured by hillary okay if he wasn't pressured by hillary i wonder would it have been different would he have liked to have been a little bit more fair i wonder who knows i can tell you that the guy is a regular on msnbc i think he still has a show there so i severely question his uh what's the correct word i'm looking for here his uh Intentions? Uh, not intentions. No. Is fairness? Yeah. Is impartiality? That's what I'm looking for. Impartiality. Not the better word. Yeah. I, I seriously question his impartiality in any sort of these matters here. So, what else about anything else about Lester that you can think of that just immediately struck you as? I didn't like his attitude. E- even his, e- even how he phrased things. Um really came off as he was attacking Trump but not just that he would keep on it too he wouldn't kind of let things go he would let things go with Hillary and he would let her talk way way after uh the time was up with her and he but he barely ever said anything to her and even if he did it was just a very mild soft you know you're over the time whereas Trump was like you're over the time you're over the time nope shut up you're over the time and that was well, and that just shows you far even more what kind of a man he is. Yeah, he was definitely pushing to have Hillary just kind of ramble on in her <clears throat> in her meandering answers. There, we'll get to that in just a second. Here, I also find it somewhat. I can't. Well, I guess funny at this point because it's just so blatant and so obvious. That, I mean, you can't help but laugh. But right off the bat, he comes out there and says, uh, these are the questions that I've chosen. And uh, it's like, okay, Bullshit. wait a minute, wait a minute. Bullshit. You pick the questions. <laughs> you're, you're telling me that these questions were picked by you and not by the debate committee. So what is the debate committee doing? Allowing the moderator to essentially decide what the tone of the program is. And when you notice how he ran the debate, Hillary always got the first question. And so she was allowed to set the table and draw the first attack on Donald Trump, which usually put him on the defensive. Now, I'll talk more about Trump's performance here in a little bit, but sticking with Lester Holt, he always went with Hillary Clinton first, and then he would go to Trump with either a completely different question or if he allowed Trump to answer the same que- the same question that he gave to Hillary, there would be a lot of interruptions and even, like I said, Candy Crawley moments where he tried to fact check. Is that the same impression that you got? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think I was trying to think of saying that earlier, but didn't really get around to it. The the fact that when I was saying he was you know keep harping on Trump. Well, he would in, he would interrupt him a lot, um, but interrupt him with, you know, like, yeah, why'd you do this? Or, yeah, what about this? Like he um, it would and like and like what some people are saying online, it was like he was the um, third Kick, debater, yeah, not, third not, debater yeah. not a, you know, what, what he's supposed to be a, a moderator, a moderator and and, you know, be technically unbiased and just being the the director of the show basically right i mean a moderator's job essentially is to pose the question to both candidates and then when the candidates have run out of time remind you know announce that hey you're out of time and try to wrap it up and get them to move on to the next topic he's not supposed to be there trying to fact check the candidates and he only fact checked one candidate and that was donald trump the entire time now here's something i don't know if you know or not okay but how many Unique questions did he give Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton? I really have no idea. According to people that have read the transcripts and have looked looked over the videos again, he gave Hillary Clinton essentially two unique questions while Trump got 15 different unique questions. And the, this is different from the from the tip this is different from the from the preset questions that he had. He only, I think, if he ever followed up with her, it was only with two times. 
Whereas with Trump, he had 15 different instances where he followed up with either a follow-up question or tried to shift the subject or tried to get try to trip up Trump in some form or fashion. Now, the the problem again with this is that the moderator is not supposed to be interjecting themselves into the debate. The moderator is supposed to ask the question, step back, let the candidates go back and forth, and when time is over, move on to the next segment. If they if there is a problem where the candidates are talking over each other, the moderator would then step in and say, Okay, you you know, you should get thirty seconds to respond and then you can have thirty seconds to respond back and then we have to move on. I mean, it, it's the the moderator does not have the duty of interjecting themselves. And yet, isn't that what you saw last night? <laughs> yes, obviously. So, my first prediction was correct in that regards. And I'm not tuning my own, own horn here. Like I said, anybody with common sense could see what was going to happen. Now, moving on to the second prediction, that the media was going to declare Hillary the winner. We... Uh, we, we have to face the fact, folks. The media is nothing more than the, the extension of the Democrat Party, the Democratic Party. They are so in the bag for Hillary Clinton that if she were to jump off the clip like lemmings, they would follow her to their doom. Now, to this question goes to my lovely wife here. Your impressions on Hillary Clinton's performance last night? Honestly, better than I expected. Um, and as some people say, uh, better than she probably should have, uh, in, in, re in regards to how we've seen her in the past react to things and, and how she responds to, to questions. Some are even going as far as robotic. Okay. I would agree with you that on the surface level that yes, it did seem like she had a better performance. Uh, what I picked up on, and again, this is somebody that, uh, I'm coming at this from somebody that has a little bit more experience you know, looking at these issues and studying them. Like I said, I'm a political junkie. And not to put you down, my love, my darling, <laughs> okay? But I mean, she is someone that is looking at this from a common, everyday uh, viewpoint. My perception of Hillary Clinton we saw four Hillary's last night. We saw, first and foremost, the smug, arrogant, contemptuous Hillary. I mean, you, you oh, saw that. absolutely. Those faces she would make sometimes at Trump. Oh, my goodness. It was like she wanted to just go lunging at him. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, John Nolte, for pulling some screenshots on the, the smug faces she made there. But, yeah, you would see that whenever Trump would respond to her, and you could tell that he was digging to try to get under her skin— you, you could look at her face and you just see just the smug, arrogant attitude she had towards him. Like, I am so much better than this man. Why am I not 50 points ahead of him right now? I can't believe I am standing on the same debate stage as him. I should be getting coordinated right now. And, you know, they were coming up. Those those uh, faces of hers were actually coming up sooner than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I expected it, them maybe a little bit longer later when she was getting a little tired you know or getting a little more worn down no they came pretty soon and they i remember did. when we I, first saw it we were both like oh there it is there it is <laughs> I, I was wondering you know what was going to what was going to occur first was her bitch mode going to come in <laughs> to play or was trump going to go full trump yeah. before her yeah and and well if you were a betting man uh bitch mode would have won on that one <laughs> That one I think came out not even five minutes into oh the gosh, into the debate. So. I think she only lasted five minutes before we, we we got the the smug face off of her. So that was Hillary number one. Hillary number two was high dopey Hillary. Did you did you I catch? Guess, you know I didn't really say anything because I I didn't know if it was just me or not, but it did seem at times where. She would kind of look around spacey. Was that just me? Yeah, she would have the spacey look about her. But then also, you know, some of the times when Trump would attack her and then she would just give that, you know, that, that oh my goofy gosh. smile. Yeah, she'd be like kind of laughing. I'm like, what is she laughing? What is she? 
what is she laughing at? Yeah. It, it, uh, not only that, did you did you see the the Hillary uh, what the, the Hillary shimmy? Did you see that little gift mm-hmm. going around oh, there? Oh, I did it. After one of Trump's attacks, she goes ah, okay, and she does this like little shoulder shake thing <laughs> that but unlike like most people that would kind of go, ah, okay or and then stuff like that she goes on for like a full 10 seconds it was like her shoulders were doing the wave <laughs> or they, they just could not stop oscillating between each other it, it was seriously like what drugs do you have to be on to not realize that you are doing that man that is some pretty darn good ganja you're <laughs> Your doctor's giving you there. Well, we all expected her to be yeah. doped up on some serious stuff. Yeah, I know, but I mean, <laughs> this was in New York, not Colorado. <laughs> anyway, so, but yeah, she at times yeah, she looks spacey. This the, that creepy, you know, smile. I am so high right now. That she that it looked like that she gave. You know, it almost it almost makes you wonder if she did have an earpiece in. Was she laughing at someone's joke or what they were saying on their on their end? I mean, you certain- know, I mean, because there was times where I'm like, why why is she laughing at this? Like, I I don't understand. Like, uh, you know, okay, some people are kind of laugh like, ha yeah, you're an idiot. Well, either yeah, ha ha. Either but like this I said, she didn't seem to fit even with that. Either like I said, she's like really high and she's just you know getting the giggles, yeah, like, like, the gigs, <laughs> or she is trying to come off as cool confidence and just trying to play off trump's attacks like oh it's no big thing you know the, the, he, he can't hurt me or whatever he 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 he. i'm much better than that or and it just really I came off i can't be i can't be taken she, down. she 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 is so unnatural she just can not look natural to save her life not 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 whatsoever so that was hillary number two hillary number three Robotic Hillary. Now, did you? How would you describe her responses most of the time? Okay, to be perfectly honest, and I'm talking about I'm talking about the the policy responses, not like when she was going back and forth between her. To and be Trump. perfectly honest, I spaced out every single time she went over just a couple of seconds, and I think it is because she's just saying the same stuff we've heard forever, or also because she was saying it robotic, so then it's not really making you interested in what she's saying because she's not saying it enthusiastically enough or with enough you know uh i don't know about is the right word tonation i I, i'm not quite sure i i don't know because she doesn't really have you know she is a slight slightly monotone let's be honest she is kind of she is kind of monotone she has two modes she either sounds like monotone, like you say. Yeah. Or she's got the high pitched. I'm coming after you, my pretties, and your little <laughs> dog too. <laughs> Boy, I mean, she just has this like god awful screech. It's not even a yell. A, a yell, you know, you can still argue could inspire but, people. But, but she does um, raise her voice every now and then and that's really when i think that voice comes out and i've never been a fan of people who speak vi- like too loudly right yeah it's it's not enough to say that it's not pleasant it, yeah it's not enough to say that it's not pleasant it's just oh man it, it's it's so evil it it really does sound like when she gets in that screeching voice, she just sounds real angry, like she's about ready to call for the torch and pitchforks to come out and just you know, raid the whole village there. But anyway, sorry, we need to get back to Robot Hillary here, and the 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 answers that she was giving, the political wonks and the media elites and the Washington Boston New York corridor denizens would all say that oh she totally owned trump in how she presented the arguments nobody could talk policy like that. she's been doing this for 30 years my goodness man did you honestly think that she would lose to such a rube a, a buffoon a commoner as trump but that therein lies the problem she spoke to that class of people she did not speak to the common everyday folk. And gee, how many more are in which class that you just spoke about? Exactly. I mean, you might have, you know, a few million 
going, maybe even 10, maybe a couple 10 million, okay, just between the left coast and that, and the, the northeast corridor there. But to be perfectly honest, the majority of flyover country is nothing like that whatsoever. It is the, the common clay, the, 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 the salt of the earth. You know, morons, to quote Blazing Saddles, great movie. They're not morons, though. I no, have high respect it's, it's for these a, people. No, I do have high respect for it, but I couldn't let that movie line not be said. It's it's a great movie. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't seen the movie, check it out. It is seriously one of the best movies ever, and, it, and it's one to make your social justice warrior heads just explode. Anyway, so the media, of course, came out and you know, said, oh, this is great. Hillary won for the night, but I really don't think she did, and that leads us to no, uh, prediction number three, that Trump was going to win in online polling and in message boards with the common area people. Now, here, uh, now going back to my lovely wife over here, ask you, my dear, what did you, what was your impression of Trump overall? I, I feel like my answer is kind of m- mixed because... Um, there were times where he was able to kind of control his emotions and he would be what you would call more presidential like, but then there were times where his personality was really coming out. And there was actually times where I was concerned that he was getting a little too emotional. Um, especially because so many people are, were really looking forward to seeing him more presidential this time. I, I even know, uh, uh, friends personally that were saying that they were really hoping to see him more presidential, um, which I think he did give, you know, some of the time, and then some some of the other time he did he did come out a little bit, you know, his Trumpness, <laughs> yes, his he personality. Did. But you know, to be honest, I like them both. I like I like both his usual Trump attitude, and then when he's trying to be a little bit more presidential. And I believe that. A lot of people saw through saw through the media bias and actually saw the real Trump in that, yes, at times he did get passionate. He did almost seem on the verge of going, you know, the full Trump, yeah. you know, rabid Wolverine like he was in the Republican primaries. Yeah. But he stayed back from that, which is good. Yeah, he didn't he, go over the line. Yeah, the, he didn't cross that line, which yeah. is good. And... But I, what people saw, and you're looking at the online polls, is you are seeing Trump dominating in online in online polls. CNBC, Time, Time, you know, not necessarily a conservative piece right there. I think Variety had him up ahead. There, the polls in San Diego, polls in Philadelphia. I mean, there, there's polls all over the place where. Trump was ahead sometimes by double digits, sometimes by like 20 points and had a Hillary in terms of who won the debate last night. And here's an interesting story coming from the uh, Philadelphia area. No, no, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. Coming from the Pennsylvania area. This reporter wrote about how she spent the debate night in a Democrat heavy town in a bar. And the debate was on in the bar. And she reported that I believe everybody in that bar decided they were voting for Trump that night. And the biggest <laughs> and the biggest reason th- th- these people th- th- going into the bar, she said that they were relatively undecided. They some were kind of leaning towards Hillary because she's a Democrat. And they are a Democrat. But then after the debate, everybody decided that they were going to go for Trump. And the uh, of the variety of reasons, the best one I can give you is that. One of the guys told her that, look, I'm a small business owner. Trump was speaking to me. He was speaking my language. He wasn't talking over me like Hillary was. He was speaking down to me about taxes, regulation, you know, things that actually matter to me. She's talking to who? She's talking to the elites, but he's actually talking to the common man, the people that actually make up this country. And that is why you're seeing Trump win. That also is why... I believe that towards the end, or well, not towards the end, but during it, you also saw the fourth Hillary, which I didn't touch on the second section because I wanted to, because I wanted to save it for this particular point here. Because when we start talking about how Trump 
was how well Trump was doing in the debates, you could see Hillary getting desperate in her attacks. And so this fourth Hillary, I like to call she started, you know, kind of lowballing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, she was hitting below the belt. Yeah. To, to, to be to, to be sure there, and the, the, this fourth Hillary I call scared Hillary. <laughs> okay. Twice that I noticed, she called out for. All you fact checkers out there, you know, get on this. You know, well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> yes, it was oh my ridiculous. Gosh. And you know, I made a comment to some some uh, coworkers today. Lazy. That you know, there you go. Not- we should start another uh, lazy hashtag. Hillary. <laughs> hashtag lazy Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. But you have the, the you have this candidate that is supposed to be a policy wonk. That's supposed to have had 30 years of experience under her belt. Which, that alone, if you heard someone had 30 years, they should be unbelievably smart and have c- crazy good plans. Someone uh, that you could really look you know, up to and, and trust. And <laughs> that's just not... Right, that's but just, as Trump so astutely pointed out, you've had 30 years to fix this. Why haven't you fixed that it That was amazing. Yeah, why are you just now talking about fixing it? No, Trump had some amazing. Oh my gosh! Amazing one-liners amazing last night. Amazing zingers! Oh man! I can't. I know Hillary had some too, but like I said, hers came off as like the arrogant, smug type, whereas Trump and regarding unimportant things. Yes, and also regarding important things, but I think Trump's two best lines was the thirty-year thing we just mentioned, and then also the whole okay. I will go against the advice of my lawyers and release my tax returns as soon as Hillary releases her 33,000 emails that she claims she deleted. Brilliant move. We're like, oh! Oh, that was, yeah, I know. <laughs> that was like, mic drop right there. Oh, play him out, Paul. There you go. But you have, you have scary Hillary, who, or scared Hillary, I'm sorry. Scared Hillary who started calling on her minions, the fact checkers, to go after Trump in this. The funny thing is, AP actually obliterated her in fact checking today. Like when she said that, oh, I never said TPP was the gold standard. But they came back and said, uh, no, right here. here. Here's the video. and Here's the date right here. Yeah, you, you totally lied about this. Like, wow, I am surprised that the MSM, at least one component of the MSN, actually has the cojones to fact check Hillary Clinton on this. I got to give credit where credit is due. Thank you, AP. Golf clap on that one. Okay. <laughs> but, but and then, and then towards the end there, when she started throwing out all the sexist attacks, mm-hmm. when she started playing the sexism card, mm-hmm. I, which I think still is a problem with some people in, in, in their decision to vote for Trump or not. So I so I understand why she brought that up still. It is certainly a concern. Well, she brought it up because she knows that it's a point of contention. With, and it still is one, too. And she wasn't really winning on any of the other policy Well, of course issues. she wouldn't be. Right. <laughs> well, no, no she, really, no, she really wasn't. So that's why she threw that out there because she wanted to try to A, distract, but B, also try to discredit him by trying to label him with such a awful uh, label. I mean, it's like throwing out the race card. As soon as you throw out the, as, as soon as someone throws out the race card, you know that they've lost the argument. You know they have no other substance to argue against you. They are simply just trying to destroy you any way they can so they so that they could win. Trump, to his credit, I didn't quite notice this at the time. I I, I thought that his answer at first when he, when Hillary sort of throwing all this out unless we're piling in on him he took the high road he didn't get down in the mud with her and just left it at that and at first i thought you could have easily destroyed her by talking about how she went after the victims of bill's escapades back in the day but you didn't and then it wasn't until i heard uh, Newt Gingrich on Sean Hannity earlier today, and I'm going to pose this to you, hon, and see if you see how your reaction is to this here. Because I know you don't listen to the, the radio station there, but Newt was saying that th- that was a masterful part of statesmanship, where instead of responding to Hillary's attacks and obviously going for the throat 
and using her husband's past indiscretions and rape history to to hang around her neck like she was trying to hang her his miss piggy quote unquote comments and so and things about rosie o'donnell and stuff like that he instead said you know as much as i want to respond i looked out in the audience and i saw your daughter sitting there today and i said no i'm not going to address the things that you and your husband did to these women in front of your daughter that is not the right thing to do in front of your family Words even to that though effect. they already know yeah i mean br- and they're they're they and they don't care but from your standpoint they're just as awful. but from your standpoint and how trump handled that what how how would you how would you say that new gingrich is right or do you have a different take on this about I'm sorry about that, what that, was with that Trump's Gingrich answer that right? Trump's answer uh, to Hillary in that regards showed that he was capable of taking the high road. Oh yeah, that's that's what my answer would have been. It would have been yeah, he was just kind of trying to show the better man and not not trying to seem as nasty as as some people do th- think him to be. Which okay. As much as I would have loved for him to, you know, just keep attacking her like crazy, I can totally understand that that was also a good choice because, like I said, some people see him as so many different labels, and for him to try to squash them just a bit, that was that was a good choice. Right. So, overall, though, how would you... Like, let's say there was three sections to this. The first one was on the economy. The second one was on cybersecurity and a little bit on foreign policy. And the third was on race relations. If you had to score, like just based on what you saw between the two candidates, who do you, who would you say won the first segment? Oh my gosh, I don't know how much I remember, to be honest. Um, how do you feel, though, overall? Overall... Of again, who won? Yes, who's stronger? Yes, I feel like I have to go biased because I don't remember enough because I kept glazing over <laughs> pretty much whenever Hillary talks, just because that's that's just how she talks. It's just it's hard to listen, it's hard to listen to her, but um. <sighs> Trump is so much more personable. He knows how to speak to you. Not not even to a mass. He knows how to speak to you. He doesn't... And, you know, you could almost say he speaks to a specific audience because he's speaking to the everyday man. But not even so. Because look at him. He's not an everyday man. Not in the way that we think of the everyday man as you know, the common salt of the earth. I mean, he's a billionaire. But when you look at... His style, it's very hands-on. It's very get down and dirty and do the job yourself. Sure, he uses you know more in the the mental department in terms of you know talking and making deals than he does you know with his physical hands. But like, he, but that wouldn't mean that he's not a hard worker because he very much is, and no one could ever doubt that. Because right. I mean, really, you don't get successful at anything. By well, unlike Hillary, but for 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 the most part, you know, as far as you know, real success, success that you can be proud of, um, you don't you don't get it by doing nothing. Right. No, I completely agree. So your feelings, though, suggest that you don't remember. Well, okay, you don't remember exact. You don't remember what was said between the two candidates, but. Overall, you felt like Trump talked to you more like an adult, like a regular person, than whereas Hillary just talked over your head. Right, and also um, Hillary, like every now and then I would catch a word, right, among the just... The word salad. (laughs) Yes. The political word salad. And the words would be... With a dash of bullshit. And the words would be 
things that sound good and I, I, I think I think that's also part of the reason why it honestly the left is so dangerous is because if you listen just to a little bit of what they say every now and then, what they say sounds right and so it can be really hard to know who's right, who's not, who's actually telling the truth, who's not, and seeing the truth among everything. But apparently her siren song didn't work on the likes of you. Because <laughs> you're going for Trump. Well, I would say that to... I, I forgot who it is that originally quoted it, but it's been said by a lot of talk show hosts, uh, Scott Adams over at Dilbert's, uh, and a number of other people. And this is something to keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that a lot of people won't remember what it was that you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. Think about your favorite movies. Can you honestly say that you remember every single line of that movie? Or let's say you just go into a theater and you see a movie just once. Can you remember every little detail about that movie? that every Where every scene was? It's a very rare person that can. <clears throat> Most of us remember not so much what was in a movie, but how that movie made us feel. Were we sad at the end of it? Were we glad? Did we feel like we we had been betrayed, like watching something like 13 hours? It's and it's an emotion response. And while you know, I try to be logical and I try not to get into the emotional side of things here, you cannot deny that emotions play a very important role in our lives. We are emotional creatures. We are people that... Yeah, we're not Vulcans. Yeah, we're not Vulcans, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper. Oh, and Hillary totally broke the law. I, I can't believe you people just cannot see that. I mean, even on Vulcan, she would have been executed. We don't even believe in the death penalty, but, I mean, seriously, she she, she should have been executed a long time ago. Oh, my gosh, if we had Vulcans on the Earth, do you, can, can you imagine how awesome that, that would be in regards to Hillary? I mean... I don't know. I've never, I was never a big fan of Star Trek, but that's neither here nor there. Getting back to the main point here, though, that this is why I say that <coughs> overall Trump won with the common everyday man because he connected with them on that emotional level. Hillary, regardless of which form she took, whether it was dopey Hillary, whether it was scared Hillary, whether it was robot Hillary— or whether it was smug, contemptible, well, especially smug, contemptible Hillary, she could not connect with the average American. And that is why we are seeing her continuously drop in the polls. It is why that she doesn't do a whole lot. Well, one of the reasons why she doesn't do a lot of events out in public, because the more that she's exposed, the more people get to see just how unnatural and how calculating and cold and heartless this woman is. And it turns off a lot of people. And those people that are attracted to her are people that I believe to be not only misguided in their thinking, but they are unfortunately lying to themselves about a crucial part. They're lying to themselves and shutting down a crucial part of their their mental state and that being th their conscience side that you know you know that feeling you get when you know you're doing something wrong at least this is you know this is for me whenever i know i'm doing something wrong i get like a feeling in the pit of my stomach they're like uh, maybe i shouldn't be doing this okay you know a lot of people they they, they they turn that off completely and that's how they're able to vote for hillary because they know get nobody in their right mind n should vote for hillary you have to you have to shut down that sec the, the section of your, your personality to be able to, to do such a horrible thing. But that uh, – do you have any final words on uh, the debate? Any, any, anything at all there, my love? Well, um, I was just going to say that, you know, earlier I was saying that, you know, Trump was both talking presidential but then also being Trump. 
but you know and, and I know so many people that wanted to hear him more presidential can I be honest and say are we not tired of that because I certainly am tired of the usual and that's why but that's why I think Trump is so is is can is having such an impact because he's doesn't usually sound like a president i like that he sounds like a i think human. you're i think you're confusing presidential with pol- uh, politician okay political okay yeah but that- and i'll explain the quick difference here the idea behind presidential is that is someone that can remain cool under fire that yes and serious because and, sometimes and, he and does, be serious yes he does, you know cracks and jokes uh, he is but also somebody that can have an emotional reaction now, I talked about in my last blog how during, was it, I think it was Mondale with Reagan. Was it? No, it was Dukakis. No, Dukakis. I think it was Dukakis that the that on a, at an interview, he was asked about his soft stance on crime and was asked, so would you put away, if somebody raped your wife, would you seek the death penalty and he came out and gave a squishy answer to it and so people looked at him so if he's not gonna you know fight for his wife then why the hell is he not gonna fight for for me and fight for this country that may not seem like a presidential quality but that is something that people do look for that you know if the person is not going to fight to to defend themselves to defend their family so forth then why they're gonna fight for me and that's something that Mitt Romney lost with as soon as Candy Crowley pulled her stunt in the second debate because he did not challenge it. You you saw his pulse tank because people thought this guy is a damn squish. There's nothing to him. He's got the consistency of a marshmallow, and th- that's how he lost. Essentially, you have to show that you're able to be calm and cool, but also be a fighter. And Trump showed that last night because he did not take guff from either Lester Jones or what? no Lester, Holt. 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 Where does this so, Jones come from? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where this Jones comes from. But Lester Holt or his massa. I don't know. Should I edit that out? <laughs> what is that? You know what? No, I'm going to keep that in. Okay, because I'm I, you know what? I'm I'm sick of this. Okay, I am sick of you know people like Lester Holt who support. The Democrats. He's a black man, and he's supporting the party of slavery. He's no better than the house slaves of old that garnered the favor of Ole Miss and making sure that they carried the water for their white masses. And no, I am not apologizing for this blatantly, quote-unquote, racist stereotype here because that is exactly what he was doing last night. He was carrying the water for Ole Miss Hillary. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that old Trump he ain't, he ain't gonna mess with old Miss here. No, no story, no story. The, the guy was a flat out minstrel show, and I will not apologize for that. It is disgraceful how he acted at that debate, and I I, I could rant on further about this about Lester. Yeah, I can understand that. But it is absolutely atrocious just how how he acted last night. He was nothing but a. He, he was nothing he but. He was a, no different from anybody else. He was a house Negro, that's what he was. He was a antebellum house Negro, carrying the water for Old Miss Hillary. And I won't apologize for that. I will never apologize for that. It's a shame that you have such great upstanding, black men like Herman Cain, like Alan West, like even. Martin Luther King. And Dr. Carson. Dr. Carson. Dr. Ben Dr. Carson. Dr. Ben Carson. Okay, I would never, if Dr. Ben Carson was in that role, he would never have pulled the stunt that he, that the Lester pulled. And it's just, I, I cannot, I cannot stand it, ladies and gentlemen. I am so sick and tired of seeing the House Negroes on the Democratic side carrying the water for people like Bill and Hillary Clinton who are blatantly racist. I mean, they were friends with Robert KKK Bird. They not only friends, but she was he was Hillary's mentor. 
Saul Alinsky was a racist. You look at, you know, she, she called Jesse Jackson a goddamn nigger behind his back. Her brother used that word 20 times, you know, in an epic rant on black people. Wasn't there something in her emails that popped up about her? It wasn't her emails, but it was a DNC emails okay, where they were DNC where they were basically email. mocking black people. Like, oh, we, we got yeah, the black I, vote or whatever. You you have, and then no, and then her her but affinity. But it wasn't just that. I mean, she. I I remember there being, I I don't know a heck of a lot. I I don't remember very much from this, but I just remember there being something about an email, Clinton, Hillary, and she said a lot of despicable things, calling a lot of people names that were honestly shocking. Yeah. No. I I. I I don't doubt it. I can't recall the email you're talking about here, but you yeah. also look at her her affinity towards Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, who looked at the quote Negroes, Slavs, Jews as weeds of humanity that needed to be pulled out. I mean, th- this this woman is a racist. There is no there is no other way to describe her. And I hate throwing down the race card on this, but in this case, it is applicable. The people that she's hung out with, the people that she admires, the people that were her mentors. You, you lie, you lie with pigs. I mean, you're you're you're, you're, you're going to become one. Exactly. That's why when you're you're a kid, or I don't know, maybe not maybe not everybody. Apparently, not everybody. But I know my parents certainly told me you are who you hang around. So they were very cautious about who hi- who I hung around and to be honest we even got into fights sometimes about the people that I would choose to hang out with yeah and I get passionate about this folks because I believe that the black community has been greatly greatly taken advantage of by the Democratic Party and it is sad to see good upstanding people just be constantly duped by the slave owner by the party of slavery. I served with a number of really good, you know, not just black, but you know, of all kinds, shapes and sizes and colors while in the Navy. And I still do. And these people, by and large, are good patriots. They're people that love their country, that do their job really well. But I, I I cannot for the life of me fathom why anybody would try to defend the likes of Hillary Clinton, especially when it comes to race issues. That's why, but that it, do, it doesn't make any sense. But it, can you come up with any reason why they do like Lester Holt? What is the reasoning beh- behind them supporting when it's so obvious that well, for those in a political position, why they, they for those do. in a political position, because they're getting a buttload of money off of it, I mean, it's easier to, it's easy to convince a bunch of ignorant people, which is what unfortunately a lot of the black community has become, to, you know, say, oh, I'm going to fix, you know, race issues or whatever if you just, you know, give me money, you support me, and vote me into office, and they constantly do so. It's easier to play upon the the stupidity of the liberal white and say that you know white guilt you have to you know vote for me and so that's how they get in office it comes down to you know what are the basic motivators of evil people power money i mean it's it, it's it's the same old song and dance it's just using a different tune to dance to that, that's all it is and so I'm sorry to go on this rant. I mean, we're getting way off topic here from what I want to talk about. But, you know, I tried to keep it civil. And, yes, I'm sure some of you will probably say, you know, some of my tweets last night were less than civil. I do not apologize for, though. I meant every word that I said because I believe speaking the truth trumps whatever uncomfortable uh, uncomfortableness that you get out of those tweets. I, uh, and in this case here, I believe that it has to be said. That Lester Holt, Lester Holt, was nothing short of a House Negro for Hillary Clinton. Final thoughts, and then we're going to move on. 
Oh, final thoughts. I've I've had a lot of things go running through my head during this. Um, can't really be sure if I remember a lot of it. Um, I I guess uh, I I was okay. Well, okay. Here's one finally coming back to my head. Um, you know, we. I was honestly surprised that Trump did not refuse to answer such dumb questions that had nothing to do with issues because we've seen him in the past be like look this is, why are we talking about this how come he didn't take that stance last night hmm that is a good question i can't say that i'm a expert on trump and what goes through his mind but if i had to take a stab at why he answered like the birther issue and his tax returns and mm-hmm. so forth mm-hmm. why did he spend so much time on those yes and that was time wasted yes I, if I had to venture a guess, I would say that he he might he probably believed that because he was in front of a different audience now. This is different from the Republican debate. So now you Who's have the greater audience of now not technically speaking to only the choir. The right, not only the choir, not only Republicans and conservatives, right, right. but now he's speaking to the broader audience of America, and in broader America. All they've been taught, all they've been told, you know, the, these past eighteen months or however long it's been, that Trump was the original birther, that Trump is a racist, that Trump, you know, that should should release his tax returns. He's trying to hide something can we, can in we there. Hillary sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, you name it. <laughs> so, I think that he used this opportunity to take those blows. And defend himself in front of this new audience and actually get his record out there and try to, and for better or for worse, try to explain to the greater population of America just who he was and it, the caricatures that were being portrayed of him by the Democrats and the media were nothing of the sort. Okay, but. I still don't I don't still understand how that was smart because really in such a small amount of time he's not really going to be able to give an answer that is pleasing enough to uh to to actually answer those those uh problems. So I'm I'm still just, you know, let me okay, let me let me say this. How the debate happened was it more is it by any chance more possi- possibly more mm, s- uh, right, successful, I'm trying to think of the word, um, better how it happened than if it was more fair, if it was more issue-based? Can we say that if it was just, just issue-based, I mean, you, you could really see easily more what Hillary's for, what's what's Trump for, and so therefore then you'd think that it would be much more obvious who you should vote for. Right. But is, but is, is there any chance that more defensive, more non-issue, crappy questions was still in some way good the, for, for, for us in, in, in our fight? It's never a good idea to go solely on the defensive because once you go on the defensive – you've essentially allowed your opponent the upper hand. This is a this is just a basic tactic in anything in life that you never want to truly go on the defensive and just let your opponent continue to pummel on you because then you look like a complete another pussy, excuse the language, but it's based off the word pusillanimous, not the other uh the other, description of it. Yes. So look that up if you have any doubts about that. Anyway, the so you look like a complete other wuss, pussy, however you want to call it, when you're just getting hammered over and over and over and over again by your opponent Which, instead of going on the attack. Again, now, why, to Trump's, why he now, to Trump's credit, yes, there were times that he did fall back and was going on the fence. But he, a lot of the times, so though, he did at least attempt to counter and go on the attack against Hillary. He seemed like almost, as somebody described it this morning, attacking from a defensive position. 
Now, I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what was going through Chum's mind. I don't know why he spent so much time defending his record. I don't feel like he did a good job, anyways. No, he didn't. And unfortunately, this is one of his weak suits that he really needs to. I don't want to work. I don't say work on because he really needs to, instead of for the next debates coming up, instead of him constantly going over because this is going to come up again. I guarantee you, Anderson Cooper is going to bring this up again, especially when it comes to the birther issue, because they cannot let this get tied to Hillary, who was the original birther. Her pal, Sid Blumenthal, was the one that helped concoct this back in 2008. Her and her campaign were the one that ran with it and tried to get everybody to say that, oh, this guy's a Muslim. Oh, this guy wasn't born in America, which, you know, there is doubts to whether he was born in America or not. But unfortunately, that ship has sailed. We can no longer do anything about it now. So there's no point in discussing it. What Trump needs to do for future debates, because when they bring it up, and they are going to bring it up again, mm-hmm. they are going to bring it up again. We're not going to get a fair debate. We never have. I don't think. No, we're not. We're not. Never, we're not we going to get a fair. Which you know, why the hell do we still do these debates? I but know, again, right? That's another topic again, for another day. Looks like what what has Trump done in the past? He will just you know he he even said no, I'm not even coming, or he'll say, look, I'm not answering the question because it's stupid and unimportant, and why are we talking about this? We should be talking about things that matter. Why didn't he take that stance last night? Yeah. Why not? I don't know. What I what I doesn't he doesn't wouldn't he have a better punch against Hillary when it's maybe solely on issues because he obviously when it's on issues yes if he can stay on target and not get caught chasing all the little white rabbits that she throws out. The reason, her, her way. Yeah. the reason why they do it. There's the reason why they do it. Now, when it comes now, the answer to your original question because they know they have no real, why, right? They have no real qu- way to quote unquote tear him down on his policies because his yes. policies are very pro American. Yes, is they are pro middle class. They are pro family. They are pro life. Yeah, pro life. Pro pro common man. Pro common America. Where Hillary is just self serving and serving the global elite. Now. They get back to your question, though. Why did Trump allow it in this debate? Mm -hmm. There's one school of thought going around that perhaps by allowing Hillary to expend all her ammunition in this debate, it would leave her with nothing for future debates. No real surprises. So she couldn't come back and say, you know, you were a birther. Because then he can go back and say, "Look, we, we already, already discussed. Yeah, this. we already discussed mm-hmm. about this in the last debate. We put it to bed. I already told the people. I don't know how many times that you were the original one. Let's move on. You want to drag out the same stuff over and over again? That's a good idea. Meanwhile, me, I want to focus on the future. I want to rebuild this country. You want to keep dragging up, you know, dick sizing contests from from way back in the past. I want to talk about how to fix this country, how to make this country great again." That, that's one. That's one issue. That, 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 not one issue. That's that's one uh, answer theory. Yes, oh, okay. one theory as to why he did this. Well, that's a very interesting one. Yes, the other theory is that he because he's a he's not a political wonk like Hillary Clinton is. Mm-hmm. He's only been doing this for like the last eighteen months. Yeah. So, and, and when it came time for preparation. She was the one doing all the preparation. She was the one holding late night sessions, do uh, go, recreating the conditions that she would be in for the debate. Whereas he just kind of winged it. He kept doing his events. She retired into the the Dracula's lair that she resides in to quote unquote rest up and get probably get shot up with more oh, yeah. drugs than a mm-hmm. Kentucky Derby racehorse. But that's you know neither here nor there. And while he was still out on the campaign trail pitching himself to the American people, he was visiting Detroit and talking with black churches. Mm-hmm. He was going down to Louisiana. I mean, he was doing everything possible to reach out to the common everyday American and to get their to get their vote. He was putting himself out there. She was hiding. As as, as a, a friend told you last night, as we uh, called to to. Uh, talk just a little bit about it they said hillary was 
preparing to be president while Trump was being presidential. Exactly. And there's I a thought that big that, that's another great, great, great thing there. Yeah, my good thing about my friend there. But yeah, the, her her response there. Well, maybe I was preparing to be presidential. Okay, um, you've had thirty mm-hmm. effing years to mm-hmm. prepare to be presidential. If you don't got it by now, honey, you ain't never going to get it. No, not ever. And so the. I wish Trump would have responded back to that. I wish Trump would have said, well, you know, I, like you said, I was being presidential while you were pretending or preparing to be presidential. Unfortunately, there, there were there were things that— I mean, he kind of slightly alluded to it, but he didn't say it directly. I think, I think you're saying that you would have liked for him to say it directly, which, oh, yeah, I would have liked for him to have said that as well. Right. And it is— Because that would have been a boom! That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it— Again, th- there was moments like that that Trump really could have taken advantage of the, th- th- those little remarks and completely flipped it on Hillary. He didn't. And I, again, I, I don't know, I don't know who's correct in this case. I don't know if he just has a natural instinct in this where he knows that because this is round one of three that, it's not good to just completely expend your ammo right. this the, you know in right. one in one round that you know you still you have to pace yourself like the tortoise right. and the hare analogy right. i mean you can use whatever which one you want well and also let, let's be honest no matter how much you prepare you know you're going to be nervous this was a momentous mm. debate well here, in here's history. the thing anyways this was a momentous here's the thing, thing that happened hillary spent a whole week 10 days or however much it was preparing for the debate okay and she came out sounding absolutely robotic in yeah. her answers. Which the is political never good. word salad. That sounds good to the you know, the elite and the media class, but doesn't sound good to the regular to Joe Schmo. Whereas Donald Trump would just do kind of an off the off the cuff thing with Rudy Giuliani and maybe some other supporters while playing golf or, you know, over dinner or whatever. They just <laughs> throw him questions and he would respond to it. So his, his his tactic versus Hillary's tactic, you know, you you have to wonder, you know, which one worked overall. Now again, the media says Hillary won, but that's because they like the way that she sounds. I'm pretty sure she could fart in the microphone, <laughs> and they would say that she won the debate. <laughs> but Trump. Speaking to the common man, this is where you're seeing, like I said, all those online polls. Not okay, not all the online polls, but a majority of online polls showing that Trump overwhelmingly winning the support of the common man in in, in these snap polls or Twitter polls. Now, Unless no uh, Democrats, you know, were online and and polling, because well, even then, how many Democrats do you know? actually who are kind of or actually engaged in politics let's let's be honest about that yeah that you know aren't either blindly going with hillary because she has a d next to her name or are you know secretly backing trump because they're of like that pennsylvania bar kind of quiet Uh, uh uh-huh yeah Mm -hmm. like they can go online and vote in the polls because it's anonymous they don't ask you you know who you are and what party you're affiliated with and this is you know, but this, it, online, it definitely would. And this gets back. Most of them would not be anonymous. Right. And this gets back to the greater question of what are people actually voting voting like this election cycle? The, the polls all show the race virtually tied up or within one or two points, within the margin of error for either Trump or Hillary. Uh, nationally, in a lot of swing states, some are breaking. Some have clear book right like. Hillary, th- this is good news. I don't know if you heard this yet, hon, or not. Okay. But Hillary has said that she's pulling out of Ohio. They've already written off Ohio for Trump, <laughs> that, he, that he's won. Okay. Now, that is huge, ladies and gentlemen. Huge. 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 Yes. <laughs> that is huge. Okay. Ohio is a must win for the Republicans. As I said before, no Republican has ever won the White House that, ha- that has not won Ohio. And in the last... You know, couple elections, Mitt and McCain, they both lost Ohio and they lost the election. So 
if Ohio is going for for Trump, and Ohio has generally been regarded as a bellwether state to kind of see where the rest of the country is going, what is that telling you? And then you look at places like Colorado that should be in the back for Hillary, and it was a couple of weeks ago. Now it's virtually neck and neck, or Trump is ahead. Minnesota is now neck and neck. Wisconsin was in like two, three points. Uh, Hillary's, Hillary's ahead there, but Trump is nipping at her heels. Michigan, the same thing. Pennsylvania, the same thing. Virginia, okay? And I come from the great state of Virginia, all right? I grew up in the Fredericksburg area, and it's a great area. I love it, okay? But it unfortunately has been horribly tainted by leftist politics that have invaded from the Washington, D.C. areas. And so Northern Virginia is basically a state unto itself, I wish it would succeed and leave the rest of Virginia alone. <laughs> I really do. But, you know, it, it's turned blue because primarily of northern Virginia and then a pocket down in Richmond and a pocket over in Charlotte. But the rest of the state is deep red. And now that looks like it may be going for Trump. It's neck and neck there as well. He's pulled ahead in North Carolina. He's pulled ahead in Florida. He's pulled ahead in Georgia. He's pulled a Head in, uh, where was it, Nevada. It is, it, I mean, and then uh, Maine is also showing, I mean, I, I'm, I'm envisioning right now some, you know, sci-fi movie of, you know, some huge screens up on the walls and all these texts, you know, banging away, frantically on type the firewall is falling, we got to get back on it right now. I'm just imagine that's what the Democrats are feeling like right <laughs> now, okay? That the, the, All their firewalls, all the states that they thought were safe for them are now succumbing to the Trump train. Succumb to the dark side. <laughs> Actually, no, Trump would be the light side of the force. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. Anyway, you so you have the, so you have all this going on, and you put this in context of what the, the first debate is going, uh, how much of an impact the first debate is going to have. And what I can tell you is that you're probably not going to see a whole lot of impact of this first debate. I would say that those people that were solidly for Trump are still going to be for Trump. Those that were solidly for Hillary are still solidly for Hillary. Uh, you've already seen a, like, I think a two-point swing of undecideds go towards Trump, which, okay, good move, but not really earth-shattering we here. You might see a slight movement towards Trump and some of the other polls. I think where his appeal is going to be the most heard is in those blue-collar type states like Pennsylvania, like Michigan, where he came out strong and basically telling the truth that, you know, all these great plants that we once had, these manufacturing jobs, have now gone on to Mexico. And, you know, I'm all in favor of diversifying our our energy industry but we can't shut down coal we can't shut down natural gas we can't shut down all these indus all these factory all these power plants that run off of fossil fuels we can't just put people out of work and that's what hillary wants to do and more and more you're, you're going to see i do believe that more and more you're going to see a shift towards trump i just don't see that this debate really changing a whole lot of hearts and minds for one way or the other. Because it was too defensive. It was not it was not about policies. Right. So if we'll it was but again, that unfortunately you have to have the bait, uh, moderators that aren't going to try to interject themselves into the political process. Now, it would have been great if Trump at some point said, "Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Clinton. I didn't realize you were sitting down here. Why don't you come up onto the stage, you know, with the rest of us here?" Or you know, called out really. If he if he spent a little more time calling out Lester for basically trying to defend Hillary Clinton when she should be defending her own um, her own record and her own fact checking. Anyway, I believe though that where Trump is at this debate is not going to be where it's not going to be where uh, where. Let me try that again. Where he ended up in this debate is not where he'll end up in the second debate. I think that in the second debate, 
we are going to see him take the gloves off a little bit more and fire back against Hillary a little bit more. He's not going to leave as much on the table like he did this time. And he's also going to... I think he's also going to move the needle more towards him in the second debate. That's a prediction. And I, a hope. Yeah, and a hope. <laughs> you always got a hope here. Hope's probably the most important virtue that we can have because without hope, you don't have a reason to keep on going towards your sec your Is this thing still on? Just Hello? just just fix it. What's going on? No, because it's just it's really low. So fix it first, and then start back where you were. You like moved in. And okay, okay. You're now like having to, you know, hunch. I'm gonna, so. have, yeah, I'm gonna. Have to, uh, anyway, sorry. Okay. Anyway, yeah, hope is probably the most important virtue because without hope, you know, why do you carry on and doing what you're doing? So always have hope, ladies and gentlemen. And I believe that things are getting better for the, the the chances of Trump winning are getting better day by day. It's still a long road ahead. We shouldn't rest on our laurels. We shouldn't act like we're going to win. We should always continuously uh, fight for the, for that victory. We need to continue to fight. And, but I do believe that the winds are shifting. Oh, just to give a little anecdotal story here. So, uh, real quick, we live in a college town. I'm not going to say which one it is, but we live in a college town. So, obviously, a lot of leftist students, you know, running around here. But the apartments down by the uh, the, the stadium there for the college, mm -hmm. I saw a whole bunch of Trump signs on the <laughs> apartment's balcony really? there. Yeah. Huh. So, again, we're, we're talking, you know, leftist students apparently maybe either converting or – you know, even if it's only a half measure where they're going for Trump over Hillary because they were they got burned ha 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 over the uh, the <laughs> DNC uh, primaries. Anyway, I know this is kind of overly long, and but I wanted to be thorough as thorough as possible on our analysis for the debate here, and I feel that. We've covered everything. Do you think we missed anything, honey? Is there anything that you think that we should bring up? Nothing's coming to mind. Okay. In that case, then, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to do my usual thing where I talk about other news events because I think that this event for the week was really huge. 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 <laughs> yes. But th there, there's still plenty to talk about, and so I might just, I might just do a separate video at some point, or just do. I don't think there's a debate this week, so I might just put everything into into my next video here. But for those of you who have not taken notice yet, I do have a website now, www.athanasiusreport.com. You can go there. You can find all my past vlogs. You can find other videos I've done. I've also been putting up writings, thoughts of the day. These are just you know quick little things that I don't think warrant a video. That I just write down and I put uh, on, I put up on the website there. Please feel free to visit. I do have, and I'm not trying to plug this to try to be a money grubber here, but I uh, I do have a couple donate buttons up there that go to my PayPal account. This is not so much to try to make a living off of this. But it is, but what it is is just a way that I can hopefully earn a little bit to help pay the cost of the yearly uh, domain Web website fees. Yeah, the domain website fees, and uh, maybe get some better equipment in the near future for this channel. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Thank you to my lovely wife for helping give a common man's perspective on this I, I really do appreciate it because i can talk and talk and talk about you know the, the political junkie that i am but i really felt that you had to approach this debate not from a political junkie standpoint but from somebody that maybe is not involved in politics as much as everyone else would be approaching it right and, and i just wanted to say thank you uh to all of my husband's current fans and hopefully 
future fans. Um, thank you for supporting him and liking him um, on Facebook and following him on Twitter. Please continue to do so and continue to support what he loves doing, which is telling the truth. Thank you, love. Yes. You can find me on Twitter, Athanasius, at Athanasius Rep. You can find me on Facebook. You, I am always trying to expand my social media outreach here. So in the coming weeks and months, you'll probably see more platforms. I'm still waiting to hear back from Gab, whether or not I've you know officially been accepted on there. I haven't heard anything back yet, so hopefully, like I said, in a few weeks we can hear back. Anyway, folks, I want you to remember first and foremost that the ultimate victory has been won. All right, Christ died on the cross. He won it for us. All we're doing is fighting the individual battles to get souls up to heaven. I also just want to say, uh, sorry for this being so long, but you know this debate was uh, such a um, important and momentous thing in our history and um lots to talk about um so i i apologize for it being long but i i hope that it was at least um insight insightful and enjoyable and if it wasn't well clearly you're a hillary supporter and <laughs> no, i'm kidding folks if you feel like we could have improved this video please let us know all right i any suggestions yes any suggestions do help. i know we are going to be working on an intro and outro Sorry about that, honey. <laughs> We've been I've been trying to work on that. We've been busy, hon. Yes. <laughs> Lots of home projects here. Anyway, sorry folks for rambling on in this. This is Athanasius saying, Good night, take care, Christ peace upon you all. Catholics vote for Trump. Catholics vote for Trump. <laughs>